Hello and welcome to this tutorial and today we're going to continue our focus on ReStudio Analysis 3 and start looking at some of the more advanced features that are available. And today in particular we're going to look at math channels. Now many of you may be thinking, oh math channels, they're really complicated or they're a little bit intimidating or I just don't have the time to be able to really work with them because, uh, you know, time is a premium at the track especially. So today we're going to look at some of the ones that have been pre-populated in the new Race Studio 3 analysis to make our lives a little bit easier. Now these are all focused on GPS data and as many of us have AIM Solo 2s, this is a really good way of being able to analyze that GPS data in a slightly different way. Now as an overview, uh, math channels are fantastic for being able to combine different channels together to be able to give you new insight or intelligence into how the driver may be performing or the car may be performing itself. But today we're going to start out with a very basic overview of using the ones that are pre-populated to be able to make life just a little bit more easy, uh, or easier I should say, and to be able to look at some of the intelligence that we can get from that GPS-based data. Now the last thing I will say is that GPS information is the lowest common denominator that exists across every single AIM device as well. So any analysis that you do with these math channels will be consistent if you're analyzing data from different cars with different AIM setups because every single one of them now is recording GPS data that can be used to be able to look at some of these particular trends. And so let's move into Race Studio 3 analysis here. And we are looking at uh, my test database and I have a file here that's GPS only. It's been logged using an AIM Solo 2. Now I know that in two ways. The first is I actually commented uh, that that was the case. Plus, um, it also tells me that this uh, was logged using an AIM Solo 2. If you're wondering how I've done this, you just need to click up here in this little icon here and it will actually tell you um, all of the information um, associated with that particular file, like the device that was used to log it or what particular uh, aspects of AIM devices are part of that CAN network or connected uh, AIM network. Now I'm gonna load this up to start off with just to be able to show you uh, what we get as standard from that particular uh, device and how we've set this up in our tutorial so far and then get into where we can enhance this using math channels. Now, uh, this is the view that we have. If I go into laps here, for example, and I pick a lap here, let's pick lap nine, and we want that because it'll be consistent when we look at this with the math channels later. You can see that this analysis allows us to be able to see um, that uh, you know one lap's faster than the other. So you can see here that the red lap is faster than the blue lap, um, and we can see why. And that's because here, for example, that the red lap takes cops uh, corner better than the blue lap. And so we've used up to this point GPS longitudinal acceleration as a proxy for driver inputs. And so down means slowing down and up means accelerating. And so what we want to be able to do here is we want to be able to analyze why this is happening so that we can understand this in more detail. Now, if I had a more advanced setup, um, I could have throttle input, I could have brake input to be able to see what the driver's doing. And so what I'd like to be able to do is to see if I can mimic those using math channels. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to close this file. And to be able to find the math channels, you can go up here to this little icon where it says math channels. Now, you may be wondering, why are you doing it in the test database and not actually doing it in the session itself? Well, if you apply math, math channels in the session, they will only be present in that session file. But if you apply them at this point, they will be available in all sessions that you're actually having a look at. So I always find that the easiest way is to be able to apply the math channels at this particular point. So I'm going to click here and this is the math channel interface. Now, uh, in later tutorials, we'll start getting into being able to build your own. But to be able to have a quick run through, we want to have a look at this quick interface to know what we're looking at. Now here, for example, we know the ones that are pre-populated because there's a little aim icon that's that's next to them. So we can see these are all the ones that have been pre-populated. And this is the library of ones. And I have a few that I've created down here using the channels that are available in my uh, Evo 4S. But today we're just looking at GPS and the ones that are pre-populated. So they're all here and you can see um, information associated with them. Now the next thing we want to be able to have a look at is uh, what's available and what am I being uh, told in this interface or this box. And so here, for example, I'm being told a comment about it, which is just a description. You can write anything you like in here, but this describes the channel itself, the formula that's being used, the channels that are being used in that formula, and then any errors that pop up. And one of the things that you'll often find as you start getting more into building math channels is there may be errors showing up in terms of how you've built it. So you need to go back and correct it. And this just keeps you an idea in terms of where that error is popping up. 
Now the GPS ones that have been created are designed to be able to help you, especially with GPS devices, mimic some of those driver inputs. And so um, GPS BRK suggests it's the brake. And so here we've got brake on. And then lap T is uh, how much time in seconds was the brake on, how much time in percentage of the lap was the brake on, and how much time in meters and distance was the brake on as well for each of those laps. To make life easy, we're just gonna focus on the brake on today. And similarly, we have CRN for cornering, we have CST for coasting, and we have TPS for throttle position. And this is throttle position sensor and how was that on? So what we're gonna to do today is we're going to mimic the driver performance of being on throttle and the driver performance being on brake. And if you think about it, an AIM Solo 2 is a GPS device. And so if it's being propelled by an engine, for example, in your race car, and it's being pushed at a certain velocity, then you can potentially suggest that that is being propelled and you're under acceleration. And so as a result, that's when the throttle's on. Similarly, if that device is slowing down at a particularly uh, sort of quick rate and it exceeds a certain GPS threshold, we know that that uh, particular device is being slowed um, by brakes, as an example. So at that point, you can tell that this device is being slowed down by braking. And so as a result, if you write the formula in a certain way, you can potentially say, if it's being propelled at this particular G-force and being slowed at this G-force, this is an indication of performance. And this just gives you a sort of a sampling or a taste in terms of what math channels can do to be able to alter that particular channel and be able to give you different information. This applies for everything that's going on with your channels. Now we're just looking at GPS. And so to give you an idea, this is a GPS a TPS on, so throttle position. So this says that the GPS longitude and acceleration in G-force is greater than a G-force of 0 0.05. This means that if the G-force is greater than this threshold, it's being propelled by an engine. Similarly, if I scroll up to the brake, um, this now says GPS longitude and acceleration G-force is less than minus 0.15, which means that it's being slowed at a rate which can only be induced um, by the brakes or hopefully nothing else that slows the car down particularly rapidly. And so using that, we can actually then start to put this into our particular uh, session files to be able to say when was the throttle on and when was the brake on and be able to look at that. So let's look at that in a little bit more detail. So what we're gonna do is we're now gonna enable this for all the channels that we have. So for this one, I'm gonna click on the cog and I'm presented with options. I can enable this just for solo two files because they're all GPS or I can enable it for everything and I want it for everything. And so I'm just gonna click enable GPS on for all sessions and this little star appears and I'm gonna scroll down. I'm gonna do the same down here for TPS. And I'm gonna turn that on as well. Now I have these enabled, I'm just gonna click on exit. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna reopen that file. We're gonna go back to that GPS analysis. But if I scroll down now in the channels list, down at the bottom, you'll see two new channels that appeared, brake on and TPS on. And just like we've looked at in other setups, what we've done is we've said, okay, for these particular units, if I wanna turn on those channels, I just click on them and they go from the right to the left and they're enabled. Now you can see that uh, when this GPS longitudinal is slowing down, the brake is on and we can see that. And when this is sort of um, increasing in speed, we can see that the TPS is on. And so we can start to get an idea of when the driver is on throttle and on brake. Now, if we go back to those laps, and I think we use lap nine to be able to analyze last time, we can have a look in terms of what's happening with that particular driver input and why there's a difference between the red and the blue lap. So we could have analyzed it with longitudinal acceleration, but what we can see here is that going through COPS, this driver, which is actually me, so the driver, um, actually puts the brake on again, which slows the car down a little bit more. And whereas on the red lap, the throttle goes on, you can see here that the throttle comes off again and goes on again. Now, this might be something that we wanna zoom in on and have a look at was there was a line issue, potentially there was, and you can see here that the uh, blue lap actually goes way off track here, maybe out of track limits and has to sort of course correct to be able to slow to stay on track. That might be a line positioning type of thing. But what you can see is you can see how the math channels have interpreted those particular um, inputs from that channel and created very useful views on track. And so what you need to do then is click on save, save this in your particular profile and those math channels will all be as, always be available as channels in your list. Now, what I won't do is go through each and every one of them. You can have a look at those and we'll start looking at this in more detail as we start analyzing data in Race Studio 3 analysis. But from a setup point of view, this is a very sort of easy way for people to get sort of like their foot in the door with math channels and be able to start using them to analyze their performance. 
If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you've got any comments about math channels, please put them in the box below because it's one of those topics uh, that I find a lot of people either really engage with or a lot of people just ignore because they just don't like the idea of them. And similarly, if you uh, want to be able to see more videos like this, please subscribe. And that just leaves me to say thanks so much for watching this tutorial.